Past Perfect Grammar Activation Pack 10 Past Tense As you've already learnt, the past tense is indicated by the past forms of the three key verbs do, be and have. With do, the past is indicated by did. With be, the past is indicated by was and were. With have, the past is indicated by had. Past tense have. The past tense is shown by the inflected past form of the verb have, had, and this is used for all subjects. I had taught, we had learnt, you had learnt, they had learnt, he had learnt, she had learnt, it had learnt. The perfect aspect is had plus past participle. Affirmative contractions. When we speak, we usually use contractions. When written, a contraction uses an apostrophe to show that some letters are missing. I taught, we learnt, you learnt, they learnt, he learnt, she learnt, it had learnt. The apostrophe in apostrophe D marks the missing letters HA. The perfect aspect is had plus past participle. Past perfect closed questions. Let's take a look at the previous statements turned into past perfect closed questions. Had I taught? Had we learnt? Had you learnt? Had they learnt? Had he learnt? Had she learnt? Had it learnt? You can't use contractions in questions. The perfect aspect is had plus past participle. Five WH questions. Let's take a look at some examples of past tense perfect aspect questions using the five WH question words. Why had I taught? When had we learnt? Where had you learnt? How had they learnt? What had he learnt? Why had she learnt? How had it learnt? These open or five WH questions get you more than the yes or no response of closed questions. The perfect aspect is had plus past participle. Five WH subject questions. Past tense perfect aspect subject questions replace the subject of the sentence with the question word who or if the subject is not a person, what. Who had taught? Richard had taught. What had learnt? The machine had learnt. Who had learnt? The students had learnt. What had learnt? The machines had learnt. The question words, who or what, give us the subject of the sentence. The perfect aspect is had plus past participle. Past perfect negative. Let's take a look at some examples of past tense perfect aspect negative sentences. I had not taught, we had not learnt, you had not learnt, they had not learnt, he had not learnt, she had not learnt, it had not learnt. Negative sentences are very easy to form as you just have to put a not after the auxiliary had. The perfect aspect is had plus past participle. Negative contractions. Contractions are often used in spoken English. When written, a contraction uses an apostrophe to show that some letters are missing. I hadn't taught, we hadn't learnt, you hadn't learnt, they hadn't learnt, he hadn't learnt, she hadn't learnt, it hadn't learnt. The apostrophe in N apostrophe T marks the missing letter O. 
The perfect aspect is had plus past participle. Negative contractions. We can also contract the past tense present aspect negative thus. I'd not taught, we'd not learnt, you'd not learnt, they'd not learnt, he'd not learnt, she'd not learnt, it had not learnt. The apostrophe in apostrophe D marks the missing letters HA. The perfect aspect is had plus past participle. Uses. Past tense perfect aspect is one of the least used of all the tense aspect combinations in English. The past perfect has one main use, and that is to talk about one thing that happened before another thing in the past. The past perfect basically talks about the past in the past. Past continuous with past simple. Do you remember that Captain Britlish twisted his knee a few weeks ago? I'm happy to say that his knee got better. His knee is not twisted now and he is okay. To tell this story, we could use the past continuous with the past simple. Captain Britlish was doing Kung Fu when he twisted his knee. He went to the hospital. He got better. Remember that the past simple talks about one event after another. Past in the past. We could also tell this story using the past continuous with the past perfect. Captain Britlish was limping because he'd twisted his knee when he was doing Kung Fu. The past perfect tells us that Captain Britlish's knee was twisted before he started limping. Position irrelevant. It doesn't matter where the past perfect comes in the sentence. The past perfect always refers to the past in the past. Because he had twisted his knee when he was doing Kung Fu, Captain Britlish was limping. Captain Britlish was limping after Kung Fu as he had twisted his knee. How long? We use the past perfect to say how long something had occurred up to a time in the past when we use stative verbs like no, verbs we don't usually use in the continuous form. Action verbs, those which we can use in the continuous form, use the past perfect continuous for this purpose. Before Captain Britlish twisted his knee, Schwa had known him for many years and had been taking Kung Fu classes with him since they had first met. Narrative tense. Narrative tenses are used to talk about the past so that we can tell the story of the things that happened. The past perfect allows us to more easily tell the story because it tells us what happened in the past of the past. Schwa arrived late for Kung Fu practice with Captain Britlish. When she arrived, Captain Britlish was not there. He had twisted his knee and had gone to the hospital. Before. As with the present perfect, we can use the adverb before with the past perfect, when it means at any time prior to the action spoken about by the past perfect. I had done this before. Had I done this before? I had not done this before. She had done that before. Had she done that before? She had not done that before. Using before. If we tell a story using the past perfect, we can use the adverb before. Schwa had arrived late for Kung Fu practice before, and when she arrived this time, Captain Britlish was not there, as he had twisted his knee and had gone to the hospital before she arrived.
Different position, same meaning. Again, it doesn't matter where the past perfect comes in the sentence. Before Schwar arrived, Captain Britlish had twisted his knee and had gone to the hospital. Captain Britlish had twisted his knee and had gone to the hospital before Schwar arrived. Past perfect after main action. If we use before with the past perfect rather than with the past simple, the past perfect then refers to a time after the action of the main verb. Captain Britlish twisted his knee and went to the hospital before Schwa had arrived. This is very unusual for the past perfect, which normally talks about the past in the past. Past perfect before main action. If we use before with the past simple rather than with the past perfect, then the past perfect refers to a time before the action of the main verb. Before Captain Britlish twisted his knee and went to the hospital, his friend Indigo had arrived. Captain Britlish's friend Indigo had arrived before Captain Britlish twisted his knee and went to the hospital. Past in the past. So we can see that the past perfect allows us to more easily tell a story because it tells us what happened in the past of the past. Before Schwa arrived for Kung Fu practice, Indigo had already taken Captain Britlish to the hospital. Indigo had already taken Captain Britlish to the hospital before Schwa arrived for Kung Fu practice. Things that failed to happen. One other thing we can use the past perfect for is to talk about hopes or wishes that didn't happen. Captain Britlish had hoped to teach Schwa a new Kung Fu technique, but as he had twisted his knee and was in hospital, it wasn't possible. As Captain Britlish had twisted his knee and was in hospital, it wasn't possible for him to teach Schwa the new Kung Fu technique he had hoped to teach. Past tense verbs. Regular verbs form their past tense by adding ed. Irregular verbs have a past tense form that you must learn individually. To help you learn them, I created an irregular verb activator with 171 irregular English verbs, which you'll find as part of Grammar Activation Pack 3, Past Simple, and Grammar Activation Pack 6, Present Perfect, both of which you can get exclusively at britlish.com. Grammar Activator. The best way to activate what you've just learned is to do some exercises where I can ask you some questions and tell you whether you're right or wrong. You can do this in the Grammar Activator which is available on the next page. Just click the Start Quiz button to begin. You'll be asked some random questions from a bank of questions. Each time you complete the Grammar Activator, you can refresh your browser and a new set of questions will be created for you. The Grammar Activator is only available at Britlish.com. English Activation Packs are only available at Britlish.com. Become a Britlisher and get free Activation Packs today. If you like this video, please click the like button, subscribe, share it with your friends and leave a comment. I look forward to welcoming you as a Britlisher at Britlish soon. Goodbye for now.